All right, so again, the analysis is just the important information about your balloon. If you notice, it says all ruler measurements should be rounded to the nearest half an inch. Right? All the calculations, because you're going to be plugging in these numbers into the formulas, all calculations with a calculator, you can round to the nearest tenth. And that will make finding the volume much easier. All right? So there's three measurements that I need to know. And I'm not quite sure if you guys can see the board behind me, but I do have an image of a hot air balloon there with what we're calling B, which is the diameter of the mouth. That's this part right here of the balloon, okay? The mouth where the air comes in and out. D, which is the distance across the glued seam, all right? So where it's glued is usually the widest part. I need to know that distance. So I carefully stretch it, and I'm going to measure that. And then H is from the tied part to the tape part. That's the height of your balloon. So we need to know those three calculations. And we're going to use those calculations to find your diameter. Right? Now, diameter is normally the distance across the round part. Right? Now, most of the time, this round part is... Let's see what happens when I pin myself to the screen. Most of the time, you guys are thinking diameter. And you're going to try to make this round and then measure the distance across the widest part. Well, that's not easy to do. That's just guessing. So what you can do if you look at number one on your analysis sheet, it says to stretch the mouth as wide as it will go. So right here, eventually it's going to be taped when you're done assembling. And take that measurement. Now you can use a regular ruler. You can use a yardstick. You can use a meter stick. Okay, I can use a meter stick, I can use a tape measure, I can use a regular ruler. The key is, is I'm rounding it to the nearest half an inch. I'm not looking for absolute perfection here. So I hold it like that and I get 14 and a half. So I'm just going to record that. Okay, 14 and a half. Now question two, you have to use a formula. And on your Google Classroom site, the document that I posted there, I highlighted and color-coded the formulas. So it says to use Formula 1 on the worksheet. Down the bottom of the worksheet on your Google Classroom, it's going to say Formula 1. And they're going to be color-coded to match. Because okay? my goal is to take this distance and find the diameter of that opening. And that's easy to do. Okay? Circumference is pi times diameter. So if I stretch my balloon like this, and I double that, so if you notice, Formula 1 says length from number 1, which is 14 and a half, times 2. So that's what I did. So the circumference of this is going to be 29. That's the distance around this perimeter, is 29. So if I know the circumference, then I can plug it into our formula. Now, if you can see behind me, you're going to start using these in science. That's known as a formula triangle. You can use it for circumference. You can use it for speed. You can use it for density. And it's when you need to rearrange the formula because you're not always solving for, for circumference. You're not always solving for speed. You might need to know the distance or you might need to know the time depending on the variables you're given. Well, here's a perfect case. Circumference is pi times diameter. Well, I'm trying to solve for diameter. So what you do with a for, tri, uh, triangular formula is you set it up, okay, it always looks like it's a triangle, horizontal line, vertical line. I make the equation correct, so circumference is pi times diameter. So now when I need to solve for diameter, diameter is going to be circumference divided by pi. So that triangular formula, formula triangle, allows you to easily manipulate and move formulas around to solve for what you need. But if that confuses you, then you're just going to look. Formula 2 on the worksheet. It's going to be highlighted in a specific color. The formula is going to be highlighted in a specific color. So to find diameter, I take the circumference, which is 29, and I divide it by pi. And I'm going to get 9.23. Okay? So that is the exact diameter of this mouth. Then what I want to do is I want to stretch the balloon at the glued seam. So right here, I'm going to stretch that. I'm going to take my instrument to measure. I don't even care if you have a small ruler, and I get 39, I believe. 
So that's all I did was I measured the distance across this widest point. If you need to use a small ruler and just do this, do it as accurately as you can. I'm just looking for that measurement to the nearest half an inch. So just like the mouth, I stretched the widest point. I took that measurement. Now I'm going to use my formula. I'm going to use formula three to find the circumference. Okay, so the distance, you measure the distance to find the circumference. It's going to be the length times two. So 39 times two. That's going to be 78. Now to find the diameter, okay, it's circumference, which is 78, divided by pi. So the diameter of this balloon at this point is 24.8. The diameter of the balloon at the mouth was 9.2. Okay. Then what I want to do is I want to measure the height of your balloon. So all I do is measure from, like I said, the string to the tape. I'm just going to take that measurement from string to tape, and I write that down. <laughs> the mass of the balloon, if you're in person, you'll be able to use a triple beam balance in order to find it, or a digital balance. If you're at home, I'll just give you a value based on what you tell me, how many panels you used. Okay? But you're going to need to know the mass in order to find the density. So the goal is to find B, D, and H. And again, it is so simple. You stretch the mouth, multiply it by 2, divide it by pi. You stretch it at the widest point. You multiply it by 2, you divide it by pi. And that's going to be the diameter of those two openings. Okay? Now, you need to know that for this scary-looking formula. This is the volume formula. What it is, it's the volume of a half a sphere plus the volume of a cone. Because that's what you have. You have half a sphere, and you have a cone, and they're added together. So it looks scary. It looks hard, but it's not. If you know your order of operations, and again, the document that I put into your Google Classroom, I color-coded each step. There's seven steps in order to solve this equation. If you follow it step by step, it should be easy to do. And the first step is just to write the formula. Volume is pi divided by 24. Then you have brackets, two times the height, parentheses, D, which we said was the diameter of the widest point, okay, squared. So you got a whole slew of stuff. Second step, plug in your knowns. So we know pi is 3.14. We know the height of the balloon, because we just measured it, is 51. We know the diameter at the widest point, wherever it says D, is going to be 25. So anywhere in that formula it says D, I replace that with 25. And anywhere it says B, I replace it with 9, because that's the diameter of the mouth. So the first two steps require knowing zero math, none. All right, it's just writing the formula, plugging in your knowns, and don't panic. Because now you do your order of operations. I have to do parentheses. Okay, I have parentheses in that formula. So step three is just starting the parentheses. Everything else stays the same except the parentheses. So I rewrite pi divided by 24, 2 times 51. Now I have to start my parentheses. 25 times 25 is 625. 25 times 9 is 225. 9 times 9 is 81. And then I write the rest of the equation. So I know it's tedious. Right? But if you do this step by step by step, your chances of making a mistake are much slimmer. Well, I like to do the parentheses in three steps, even though if you want to combine it all into one, go ahead. But all I did first, now I'm going to do the second part. Okay? I still have parentheses, so I write my equation like it is until I get to my parentheses, and 625 plus 225 plus 81 is 931. And then I write the rest of the equation like it is, because I'm only doing parentheses. Now, I know in math that technically that is no longer a parenthesis. But because there's two halves of the equation, I'm going to finish with that parenthesis. Okay? So my next step is going to be to take 931 times 51 times 2. 
So I've done that whole left side of the equation. Right? So I've written pi divided by 24. I did 2 times 51 times 931. Gives me that big 94,962. Now my whole left side of the equation is done. And the parentheses are done. Okay? The rest of the equation I wrote the same. Now I have to do exponents. So in step four, it's just the exponents. I write the equation exactly like it is. When I get to 25 cubed, that's 15,625. Minus 9 times 25 squared is 625. Minus 9 squared is 81. Everything else I left the same. I'm just doing my exponents. Now I have to do multiplication and division from left to right. So pi divided by 24 is 0.131. 9 times 625 is 5,625. 81 times 25 is 2,025. Now that's where kids usually make a mistake. Remember, you have to do your multiplication and division from left to right. Don't worry about addition and subtraction yet. Okay. Now I got to do my addition and subtraction. So 94,962 plus 15,625. Minus 5,625 minus 2,025 gives you 102,937. Then you take everything in the brackets and you multiply it by 0 0.131. The volume of that balloon is 13,484.7 inches cubed. Because we measured in inches and we measured, multiplied inches times inches times inches. So I don't want you to make it difficult. All right. First step is to write the formula. It's already written on the sheet that's in your Google Classroom. Second step is to plug in your knowns right, that you just found on the analysis sheet. And notice I rounded mine. If you want to round yours, that's okay. I'm just grading your ability to do the order of operations. Step three was just parentheses. 25 squared, 25 times 9, 9 squared. I added them all together. And then I solved the whole left side of the bracket. 931 times 51 times 2. Then I did my exponents. Okay, 25 cubed, 25 squared, 9 squared. Step 5, I did my multiplication and division. Step 6, I did my addition and subtraction. And step 7, I just that balanced that equation. So it's not hard. I promise you, if you don't like math and you look at that formula, you're going to panic. It's not hard. Step by step, just doing your order of operations. I believe I also put this PowerPoint in your Google Classroom. So if you need to open it up, I think I might have put this sample volume problem also in your folder. So you have the step by step. You just have to plug in your knowns. All right. So let me stop recording.